brothers and sisters of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, our prophet knows where we are in the prophetic timeline. He has made some jaw-dropping statements to help us understand and orient ourselves properly to the times we are living in. Do the spiritual work to find out for yourselves. And please do it now. Time is running out. The Lord placed you here now because He knew you had the capacity to negotiate the complexities of the latter part of these latter days. In coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. We have front row seats to witness live what the prophet Nephi saw only in vision. Again referencing Nephi's vision, President Nelson closed the April 2023 General Conference by telling us that the 14th verse of 1st Nephi chapter 14 was beginning to be fulfilled. I know that his power is de descending upon his covenant-keeping people, armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. After rereading verses 13 and 15 of the same chapter, my thoughts turned to a comment he made in an interview with him and Elder Stevenson after the October 28, 2018 dedication of the Concepcion Chile Temple. Wait till next year. <laughs> and then the next year. Eat your vitamin pills. Get your rest. It's going to be exciting. In early 2019, we reached an absolutely prophetic milepost. The dedication of the Rome, Italy Temple is a hinge point in the history of the Church, said President Russell M. Nelson while visiting the ancient and great city where two millennia ago both Peter and Paul preached and died. The announcement of this temple ten and a half years earlier created quite a stir in the conference center. This morning, I am pleased to announce five new temples and Rome, Italy. The First Presidency and all 12 of the Apostles were present at the dedication. It was very clear that I was to invite all of my colleagues. The brethren thanked me for the privilege of coming, but I thank the Lord for letting all of us come. A half a year after this dedication, at the close of the October 2019 conference, President Nelson reminded us that in the springtime of 2020, it would be exactly 200 years since the first vision, the theophany that marked the onset of the restoration of priesthood keys and our Latter-day Canon of Scripture. Thus, the year 2020 will be designated as a bicentennial year. General Conference next April will be different from any previous conference. In the next six months, I hope that every member and every family will prepare for a unique conference that will commemorate the very foundations of the restored gospel. On January 1, 2020, our prophet issued social media posts that declared this bicentennial celebration of the restored gospel a hinge point in the history of the Church. The Rome Temple was in operation for just one year before a string of remarkable events clustered around the April 2020 conference took place. It is day three of protests. Fox 13 Sydney Glenn was there as hundreds gathered in front of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints office building. Don't just stare, come stand with us. On the steps of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints office building. The completion of the 189th year of the church was punctuated with a protest at church headquarters, an earthquake, and the beginning of a pandemic. When the Salt Lake Valley suffered a 5.7 magnitude earthquake earlier this year, this venerable temple shook hard enough that the trumpet on the statue of the angel Moroni fell. For nearly two years, a pandemic of biblical proportions 
has enveloped our planet. This pandemic of biblical proportions left our streets, stadiums, parks, arenas, beaches, schools, care centers, and even more importantly, our churches and temples, desolate. In a letter from the First Presidency, we read, Dear brothers and sisters, after careful and prayerful consideration, and with a desire to be responsible global citizens, we have decided to suspend all temple activity churchwide at the end of the day on March 25th, 2020. This is a temporary adjustment, and we look forward to the day when the temples will reopen. No other event in our lifetime, and perhaps no other event since the founding of this nation, has caused quite this kind of widespread disruption of religious gatherings and worship. A group of Karite Jews have been sighting the new moon in Jerusalem since the late 1990s. Shalom, folks. Happy New Year. On Wednesday, March 25, 2020, the new moon was sighted by several witnesses in Israel. This is the first new moon sighted in Israel after spring has begun, so this month starts the first month of the year. An article in a U.S. daily newspaper read, Scientists warned that the United States someday would become the country hardest hit by the pandemic. That moment arrived on Thursday, March 26th. We are the new global epicenter of the disease, said an infectious disease specialist at John Hopkins Medicine. The 190th year of the church opened with an apostolic barrage. Two worldwide fasts? I am calling for another worldwide fast. A new symbol for the church. We are pleased to introduce a symbol that will signify the central place of Jesus Christ in his church. A worldwide Hosanna shout. Brothers and sisters, I now invite you to stand and participate in the Hosanna shout. An apostolic blessing. Invoking the authority vested in me, I would like to confer upon you an apostolic blessing. And a proclamation where all 15 living prophets, seers, and revelators boldly declared to the world that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, organized on April 6, 1830, is Christ's New Testament Church restored. We, the First Presidency and Council of the Twelve Apostles, issue the following proclamation. Its title is, The Restoration of the Fullness of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, a Bicentennial Proclamation to the World. It is authored by the First Presidency and the Council of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Brothers and sisters, all of these events and their collective timing bear great prophetic end-time significance. The calendar page has turned. We have passed the hinge point. We are in the latter part of the latter days. The day when those who do not obey the Lord will be separated from those who do. The day when our Savior will perform some of His mightiest works. The day when His power descends upon His covenant-keeping people. We are in that day. In the 23rd chapter of 3rd Nephi, the Savior admonished, Search the prophets, for many there be that testify of these things. Using the words of the Savior and His prophets, both ancient and modern, we will search the answers to these and other end-time questions. We will learn with specificity when was and what is the hinge point. Here are the questions I'd like to dig into right now. Was the great American eclipse a sign in the heavens? What did it mean? Or did it mean anything at all? I think you're going to be blown away at what we find. My name is Rob Urey. 
I'm an engineer and techno geek fascinated with history and the cosmos. With a penchant for detail and a strong need to understand how things work, I often find myself somewhat obsessed with searching for answers to elusive questions. In early August of 2017, without even realizing it, I embarked on a journey of discovery that would traverse thousands of years of history, encompass thousands of miles of windshield time, and include thousands of hours of study. Along the way, I found answers to questions I didn't even know I had. I invite you to join me on this journey where we will not only find that the August 21st, 2017 eclipse was a sign in the heavens, but that it is also a part of a cluster of signs. More importantly, we'll weave these signs into a tapestry of meaning that helps us see that we have a loving Savior and Father in Heaven who are trying to get our attention, trying to get us to prepare for the calamities that are coming upon the inhabitants of the earth. I hope you found this interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, will you please click the like button? If you'd like to see the connections we've made between the words of the prophets, historical as well as contemporary events, and the celestial bodies in the sky, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any. By the way, this channel is not monetized, nor will it be. However, your liking and subscribing will increase the likelihood of others seeing this message. My hope and wish is that as more people see this, we will all better understand how critical it is to be both spiritually and temporally prepared. As we are promised, if you are prepared, ye shall not fear. I have spent a lot of time and effort and would like as many as possible to see this. Will you please take the 3-5 to five seconds necessary to like and subscribe? Thank you so much. To better understand the end time prophecies and events surrounding us, we need a framework to collate and sort them. To help build this framework, watch the video, not when, but what is the second coming. I'm not telling anybody what to do, but it is my hope that each of us will seriously consider making and keeping sacred covenants with increasing precision sustaining and following those who hold priesthood keys and exercise priesthood authority, sanctifying our homes to be a place where the Spirit is welcome, following the prophetic concert of clarity we have received regarding food storage, and bearing a bold testimony of our Savior Jesus Christ and His doctrine. Brothers and sisters, the adversary is raging in the hearts of men. We are in the latter part of the latter days, Time is running out. I'll finish with a few words of the Savior and in His name. And it shall come to pass that he that feareth me shall be looking forth for the great day of the Lord to come, even for the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. And they shall see signs and wonders, for they shall be shown forth in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. May we all have eyes to see.